Good morning guys and welcome to this windy edition of Hyclopedia. Today I'm in Geelong to talk about another little known yet fascinating event in Taiwan's history. Now some of you may be familiar with the 2021 Netflix show Sakalu, a drama about the international incident that occurred after 14 Americans were killed by indigenous Taiwanese after their ship, the rover, struck a reef near southern Taiwan's Pingdong. Well, this story is in some ways similar, except that it happened here at the other end of the island a couple of decades earlier and resulted in a much higher death toll. This particular tale began in late 1841 with a shipwreck just off the north coast here and ended in Tainan almost a year later with the public beheadings of nearly 200 staff and crew from two British ships, the Nur Buddha and the An. But what by today's standards may seem like an unnecessarily barbaric act of cruelty by Taiwan's then ruling Qing authorities must be viewed in the context of events at the time. You see, these events took place during and in the period immediately after the First Opium War of 1839 to 1842. You know, when the Chinese emperor tried to crack down on imports of opium, only to piss off the British, the main importers of said opium. The subsequent war between the two saw the Qing badly defeated and resulted in Hong Kong becoming British, plus the creation of five other treaty ports. So, given the tension between the two, these ships couldn't have picked a less opportune time to be shipwrecked in these waters. The first vessel, the transport ship Nobuda, was sailing from Hong Kong to Zhoushan near Ningbo in September 1841. Carrying 274 military personnel, mainly Indian camp followers and Lascars, it lost its mast during a storm and drifted onto a reef near here. Damaged, but not badly enough to sink, the ship laid anchor. Then, the ship's captain and the British officers on board took decisive action. They abandoned ship, escaping to the east in a rowboat, leaving the 240 Indians and a few other crew members to fend for themselves. So much for British honour. Over the next few days, some of those left behind drowned while trying to make it safely to shore while others were killed by locals after making landfall. The rest were taken prisoner by the authorities and marched south on foot to the then capital Taiwan Fu or present day Tainan, where they were imprisoned. The Qing version of what happened however was very different. According to Qing records, the Nur Buddha entered Jilong Harbour and proceeded to attack Urshawan Fort striking a reef while in retreat after coming under defensive fire. In their report to the emperor back in Beijing, the two top Qing officials stationed in Taiwan boasted about how the Nur Buddha had been destroyed by Jilong's valiant defenders, and that those who had died while trying to evacuate the ship had actually been killed during the hostilities. Whatever the truth, those who escaped earlier in the rowboat fared much better. Drifting east for several days, they were eventually picked up by a passing trade ship, the Black Swan, and taken back to Hong Kong. After raising the alarm, the British dispatched the sloop Nimrod to Geelong in late October, with the aim of rescuing any survivors, offering a $100 reward for each crew member recovered. However, a fruitless search of the harbour area ended with the discovery that the prisoners had been sent south. So instead, the Nimrod proceeded to bombard the fort at Urshawan, damaging several guns, before returning to Hong Kong. Then, just a few months later, another British ship was to suffer the same misfortune as the Nur Buddha. This time, it was the Jardy Matheson Opium Brig Anne, which set sail from Zhoushan to Macau on March the 8th, 1842, with 57 souls and $50,000 of silver, the proceeds from an opium sale, on board. 
Just two days into the voyage, however, the Anne ran aground somewhere between Danshui and Geelong during a storm. And although the crew managed to wade ashore, their plan to escape Taiwan on some local boats that they tried to commandeer was foiled by the weather, as well as some crowds of armed locals. Again, the Qing version of events is vastly different to that of the British one. It states that the Anne became stranded off the port of Wuqi, Taichung, before being lured onto a bank in the nearby Da'an River. There, it was attacked and destroyed by Qing troops, who killed many of the crew while capturing cannons and other booty. Whichever version of events one believes, those captured suffered the same fate as their predecessors and were promptly taken south to Taiwanfu, although four of them unfortunately died during the ordeal. Upon their arrival in southern Taiwan, they were surprised to find themselves imprisoned together with the Nur Buddha survivors. And now comes the gruesome part. Immediately after the Nur Buddha incident, the Qing officials in Taiwan contacted Beijing, asking for their permission to execute the survivors. After all, they were enemy combatants, right? The reply? Well, it was a long time coming, eventually arriving in mid-May 1842, and crucially just after the Qing had lost badly to the British in the Battle of Ningbo. This was also after the crew of the Anne had joined the others in captivity. The Emperor's answer was unequivocal. Extract confessions, then execute the barbarians. Spare only their leaders. Losing the war, the Qing were desperate for any kind of victory over the British, and here was a perfect opportunity to extract some revenge. So, several weeks later, sometime between August the 10th and the 13th, a total of 197 people, mainly British subjects of Indian origin, were taken to a parade ground outside of the Taiwanfu city walls and put to death in front of a crowd of thousands of cheering onlookers. The details of the execution were recorded in the unofficial record of events in the Far East at the time, the Chinese repository. It describes how the prisoners were first shackled, then lined up on their knees before being beheaded one by one with a large two-handed sword. Their heads later put in cages and lined up along the coast. Again, Qing records differ, suggesting only 137 prisoners were beheaded, the rest apparently dying during the capture or imprisonment. A total of 11 prisoners were spared. Signed on August 29th, just two weeks after the executions, the Treaty of Nanking or Nanjing brought an end to the First Opium War. During negotiations, the British had repeatedly sought assurances about the condition of the crew of the Nur Buddha, only to be given the impression they were still alive. But by the time the British ship Serpent arrived in Taiwanfu in early October to locate survivors of the two ships, news of the executions had already gotten out. The handful of survivors, they were told, were already en route to Fuzhou. When this shocking news was finally confirmed by British authorities a month later in November, its representative, Sir Henry Pottinger, demanded the heads of the two Taiwan-based officials responsible, as well as compensation for the families of those killed, adding that they knew of the Emperor's approval of the executions. Although fortunate that news of the killings had only leaked after peace had been reached, the Qing were still worried that the British might restart hostilities, so an investigation was quickly established. The official result of the probe found that both men had lied and fabricated their reports of heroic victories by Qing troops. The duo Dao Tai Yao Ying and Brigade General Da Hong Ah were promptly relieved of their duties, sent to Beijing during the summer of 1843 and then imprisoned a few months later. 
although the veracity of the inquiry was apparently somewhat flawed, given that the duo were released from prison after just 12 days, and given brand new government roles that were seen as promotions. Or maybe it was all just a show trial, just to satisfy the British. After all, it had been performed with the threat of war looming in the shadows. Still, that spelled the end of the Nürburgra incident, and despite the written records available from both sides, we'll still probably never be able to determine the absolute truth of what happened. As for yours truly, I would suggest that perhaps both versions contain some element of the truth as while I find it completely believable that the Anne could have drifted onto rocks near Dantre while travelling south with its opium riches, the chances of the Nurbuddha, which was travelling north from Hong Kong to Joshan, drifting into the environs of Geelong Harbour are perhaps less convincing. And as I'm neither a salty sea dog nor an expert on tides, I'll leave it there. Still, an interesting tale I'm sure you'll agree. And yet another fascinating piece of Taiwan's history that should be remembered in honour of all those who lost their lives in its making. Alright guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this rather brutal yet extremely interesting video. If you did, don't forget to give me a like and you can always subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications if you'd like to catch my videos every Saturday morning. And if you'd like to watch some of my other Taiwan history videos, then you can always hit the playlist, which should be appearing somewhere around there right now. And also, I'd like to say a big thank you and give a shout out to all my coffee mates from this week. Your support is really and truly appreciated. If you'd like to help the channel, then you can always click the thanks button below the screen or you can head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can buy digital downloads, stickers and there's the eternal offer of three coffees for a free Hyclopedia embroidered patch. It's been a busy few days filming this video and I'm rather hungry and tired so I'm heading home now but in the meantime take it easy and I'll see you next time. Over and out.